last night. We did see European Commission President Jose Manuel Barroso take a step in the right direction in his annual State of the Union address. He spoke about a plan for the ECB to police banks and this aims to break the link between heavily indebted countries and their struggling banks, tackling a core element of the debt crisis we've been seeing play out so harshly in Europe. So what do markets make of the move? We're going to check in with Larry Shover, Chief Investment Officer at SFG Alternatives. Larry, a banking union in Europe, we knew this was going to come or we hoped it would, but is it encouraging that they're already speaking about it now? I mean, we only saw that German constitutional vote just last night. Yeah, at least from the American point of view, um, it's been very comforting. And we saw, like, the S&Ps had a big spike in the morning from the news that we saw. And uh, it doesn't completely relieve the region's responsibility, but just wrapping everything up in the ECB was very comforting to the markets. Once again, just getting a blueprint with some type of marching orders helped the markets stay calm today. And as we saw, we did see an initial spike in the morning. Give us a sense of, I guess, how important you interpret these kind of decisions in terms of Wall Street and how important that European economy is to you there because we constantly talk about the Federal Reserve in terms of equities and, and the economy there, but how important are these decisions in Europe for you there uh, in Chicago? You know, a month ago, they were very important. In fact, people were just looking past the, the Fed and just, just focusing everything on what's going to happen in Europe because, at the, on the bottom line, the European economy is vitally important for our export market, our financial services, our banking system, et cetera. However, when we got our bad jobs report on Friday, the tone changed automatically and everybody started pointing to the FOMC, which begins to, or concludes tomorrow. And everybody now is expecting that uh, Ben Bernanke will start a, a QE3 with about $300 billion of asset purchases. Is that going to be enough to satisfy the market, $300 billion, or is the market pricing in something perhaps unlimited? Yeah, you know, I think it's all in the language because uh, Ben is probably going to say something along the lines tomorrow that we're going to keep rates low beyond 2014 into mid-2015. Even when we have recovery, he's going to keep them low. So that communication is very, very important. And also expect him to say something along the lines of we're going to uh, purchase $300 billion, 75 25 between treasuries and mortgages. And we will uh, follow suit with more if needed in January. So to me, it seems like he's made it explicitly clear that he is joining the world's central banks in trying to inflate his way out of this problem. Thus, short term, it's been great for risk assets. Yes, yeah, short term, it's good for risk assets. But what do you think markets are making of this plan in the longer term? Because there's a lot of cynicism surrounding uh, what this is actually going to do for the economy in the long term. Because, I mean, the central aim is to... to pump up employment and people suggest it's not going to do this. In fact, I've seen some statistics suggesting that something like 600 billion will only buy you a, a one tenth percent of an increase in employment. It's just astronomical. I mean, is this really getting to the root of the problem there? Yeah, I wish you were in the United States saying that to everybody because that's the big, that's a million dollar question right now. It's like, as far as I know, no one's written a book on safe and successful central bank exit strategies. Right now we're in, in uncharted waters and adding more to that, we just don't know. It's, I mean, it's not solving the, the unemployment problem. It's not solving the structural problems that we have. So is this just smoke and mirrors? I think it is. And I think that's why we're seeing this is short term rally in risk assets. And who knows what's going to happen? And what happens if he does introduce this $300 billion program and rates actually go higher? Or if the markets just don't care? I mean, there's a lot of unknowns. But right now, it seems like the market is being caught unaware, thinking that uh, QE3 is going to, the effects of QE3 are going to be the same as they were with QE2 and the original quantitative easing. And I'm not so sure I'm willing to buy that. Okay, as you said, though, short term, this is going to be a good thing for risk assets. How much of it is it priced in if you see that $300 billion announced and uh, I guess a, a, lo a lower for longer interest rate strategy from the Fed? What's likely to be the reaction? 
Yeah, I think you just have to look at what asset you're looking at. I mean, right now we're talking about Aussie 105, and uh, today people are talking about 106. I mean, a month ago, no one would have dreamt that Aussie would be up at 105 versus the U.S. dollar. And then we have copper in U.S. terms at 370 right now, gold 1733. I mean, it's incredible. So I think it's a short term. Uh, where the markets are just expecting everything uh, to be very, very good for risk assets. No one seems to be looking at the long term right now. And I think that's a very, very scary situation because if you look at history, especially when you look at rates history, 1873, 1928, 1990, it took 10 to 13 years for rates to hit bottom. What I'm trying to say by that is that we're in unknown territory right now. and It's hard to see what's going to happen. I do believe we're going to be in a long, long term uh, low rate environment where we have something where I call inverse stagflation. We're, we're going to have an overperformance or outperformance of uh, commodities and a sustained underperformance of paper assets like stocks and bonds. Ahead of this FOMC meeting, uh at large, the markets have been interpreting bad news as good news because it'll it'll mean more chance of stimulus. After this decision, say we get the stimulus, will bad news start to be bad news in terms of the US economy? How are the markets likely to read the data releases after this? I hope so, because right now, just yesterday, we were warned by Moody's that we're, we're coming up to another credit downgrade. We have a fiscal cliff that's not being figured out. We have uh, uh, Korean, Taiwanese, China exports falling off the cliff. We have Europe not growing in the peripheries in recession, but yet that's all interpreted to be good news. It's a crazy market. I've never seen anything like this, and at some point, I think you're exactly dead on that at some point we'll interpret bad news to be bad because we just cannot continue to try to inflate our way out of this problem. Okay, Larry Shover, Chief Investment Officer at SFG Alternatives. We do thank you for your time. We really appreciate it.